morning and welcome to prayer and devotion on this Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, September 5th. I'm sorry I missed you all yesterday, but it's good to be back with you today. Um, today we are actually picking up on where uh, we were on Sunday talking about um, God as love. And today we're specifically looking at love in 1 Corinthians 13. So I'm going to be reading 1 Corinthians 13, beginning in verse 8. Um, and we're going to be talking about the most excellent way. But uh, it's good to be with you. I want to say good morning to those that have joined us at this early hour. Good morning, Barbara and Yolette. I'm glad you're both with us, praying for you as we begin the day together. And Augusta and Donna, I'm glad you're here as well. Praying for both of you this morning. Good morning, Celia, and good morning, Free. I'm glad you're both here. Praying for both of you this day. Good morning, Ernestine and Macon. Welcome. Praying for you as we begin the day together. And good morning, Blanca and Jerry. I'm glad you're both here. Holding both of you in prayer this day. And Janet and Vinette. Uh, and Marilyn, I'm glad you're here as well, praying for all of you at the start of this new day. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking about love. So we're looking at 1 Corinthians 13. I invite you to open up your Bibles. And as you're doing that, my name is Cindy Stauffer. I'm blessed to serve as the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And I'm glad you joined us today. So we're going to jump right into 1 Corinthians 13. And we're going to start in verse 8. Verse 8. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. And as for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, 
it will come to an end. For we know only in, in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we shall see face to face. Now I know only in part, but then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Our devotion today is entitled The Most Excellent Way which actually is not from 1 Corinthians 13. It's from the verse at the very end of 1 Corinthians 12, where Paul goes on to say, let me show you an even more excellent way. And that way, that way my friends, is love. So this comes from uh, Joyce Meyer's Strength for Each Day. And this is what she says about uh, our scripture today. She says, the Bible teaches us that walking in love is the most excellent way to live. God is love, and when we walk in love, we are walking and living in God. Love is more than a word we use when speaking to other people. It is seen in our actions, especially in how we treat other people. Jesus gave us one new command, which is for us to love one another just as he loves us. As we show that love, others will know that we are his disciples. God's love for us required God to sacrifice his only son. And if we truly want to love people, there will be times when we will need to sacrifice for them. According to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, love is not self-seeking, it is patient, kind, humble, not envious. It does not dishonor others. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs and does not delight in evil. It rejoices with the truth. It always believes in the best of everyone and it never fails. If we focus on loving God and loving other people, we will live the life that God desires for us to live. If we focus on loving God and loving other people, we will live the life that God wants for us. No matter what so-called good works we may do, if we don't have love, we simply make a lot of noise and amount to nothing. Uh, so, oh man, I think it's going on 13 years. Is it really, you, you lose track after a while, but yeah, 13 years. Um, when, and if you've heard this before, I apologize, but when, um, my mother was diagnosed with brain cancer, uh, she was a preacher before, a pastor, but she talked a lot. Um, <laughs> and uh, so her voice, before that, she, she'd sing. So I mean, in many ways, we're very similar. Um, so her voice was always very important to her. But when uh, the brain cancer came, it, it landed on the part of her brain where speech was. And she knew this early on because the first effects were to her voice. So uh, it, as, the, as the tumor grew, she lost her ability to speak, which was really hard, you know, because it, she had things she wanted to say, um, and in the end, she wasn't able to. But uh, at her memorial service, I preached one of my first sermons. It was before I was a local pastor, I mean, in the local church preaching. And I preached on this passage. 
um, because when tongues cease, there's still love. Like we think that love is these words that we hear or this feeling that we feel, but love is so much deeper than that. So when my mom lost her ability to talk, her eyes would tell me everything. I would just be able to look in her eyes and I knew the depth of her love. And so I preached from this message, the depth of love that, that came even when tongues cease. And I experienced that again the other day with someone else uh, who spoke volumes of love through their eyes. Um, my point in telling you this is we have these ideas of what love should look like, what love should be, you know, it, what love should feel like. But the truth is love is written on our hearts. And when we are deeply connected to God and we experience that love, then the things we do come out of that love. We choose the, the stuff that we do throughout our day. We choose to do it in love. And I want you to imagine what your day, we have a choice, every day we have a choice. We can go through our day and do the things that we do. We can do it with anger in our hearts. We can do it with frustration. We can do it with exhaustion. Um, all of those things are, are possible. Every act that we do can come from a different place, right? And if our, but if our hearts are focused on God's love, then everything we do has a different, um, it, it's not just the, the, the thing that needs to be completed, but it is God, it's, it's, an, it's an opportunity for us to share God's love in all that we do. And it doesn't have to be words. It can just be the way that we look at one another with kindness, the way that we are patient with one another the way that we choose our words and not let um, anger uh, guide our hearts. We have these choices each day to be God's love, to show God's love, to offer compassion and mercy and grace and peace, to be about the work of justice. Um, all of this comes from God's love for us. So Lauren Daigle sang, I, you know, it's hard to imagine a love like this. This is how God loves you so deeply, so profoundly. And if you have been loved like this, then love yourself in the same way and love one another. So today, as you go through your day, let the stuff on your list be an opportunity to share God's love in the midst of it. How will that, what will that look like for you? Will you choose words of kindness and compassion? And maybe it's not words at all. Maybe it's just um, in your eyes or, or more importantly, deeply ingrained in your heart. Because my friends, you are loved. Let's pray. God, we come today acknowledging that we have not always lived in the love that you offer us. Too often we have not spoken words of love. We have allowed our emotions, our frustrations, our impatience, our anger to speak words that do not bring life. They don't bring life to us and they don't bring life to the world around us. Forgive us, Lord, when we have failed to see the depth of your love for us, when we have failed to receive that love because we have felt unworthy or we just haven't even taken the time to open our eyes Lead us back to your love. Lead us back um, to that first love 
that taught us how to love. And when we forget, turn us back to your scriptures that we might see Jesus more fully. We might see the depth of his love for us. Guide our footsteps today, Lord. Every, every experience we will uh, walk into, every boardroom, every, every uh, Zoom meeting, every um, bedroom of our children and grandchildren, every place that we walk into, Lord, let it be a place, an opportunity for us to be your love. Every street where your people have slept, Lord, guide us that we might offer your love in all that we say, in all that we do, in who we are. We ask this in your name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it was good to be with you all today, praying that you will find many opportunities to, to be about the work of God's love in the world in every place you, you enter today. Well, be reminded that you are love. God loves you. And so do I. Have a very blessed day. And um, I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye, friends.